an American, <laughs> a Polish guy, oh, and two fuck. British idiots get in a helicopter. Yeah, I'm like, I'm it sounds like the beginning of a bad joke, and to be honest, it ended like a bad joke. You're like it's you're so hunched funny. over like a like a Ninja Turtle, <laughs> and like <laughs> I'm a bit glitched into the heli. I'm just gonna wait. Look All right. Don't jerk off. <laughs> Matter of fact, do what you want. You, you fucking fly like a ball. I'm sorry for making fun of you. Don't kill us. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> We're in the water. Oh god. Well, there goes the 300k. Oh, no way did he do that. Tom, I'm gonna... You're gonna fucking find me, aren't you? Fucking kidding me, guys. Bastard. How can I avoid similar fates happening to me in live multiplayer servers? Well, this is the guide for you. It's a guide to help new players get their wings and become flight ready. Also, a bit off topic. This is actually a non-scripted video, so I'm speaking completely off the cuff with a few bullet points in front of me. But I'm trying this as a bit of a, a pilot, let's say. Pardon the pun. Because... I got some feedback that actually scripting videos is boring to watch, it's boring to listen to, and it just makes it a bit more organic. So let me know what you think, I'd honestly really appreciate hearing your comments down below and seeing whether you like the new format. On to the video! So to begin, what I recommend is you download the DAISY expansion offline folder file from Dropbox and paste it into your missions folder in the DAISY Steam directory where your DAISY is installed. Now for our purposes, I'm just going to be talking about the expansion com.trenerisblast folder, which for all intents and purposes is the only one we really need to focus on. Now, if you don't have a missions folder, try verifying the integrity of your game cache. It's cheap and easy, as you all know. If your house is burning to a crisp in a raging fire, verify integrity of game cache. If your bed becomes infested with flesh-eating spiders, verify integrity of game cache. It works 99% of the time for everything, guaranteed. Now open Daisy Launcher and go to parameters and then mission and make sure you check the box and then from there what you want to do is click the three dots to the to the right once you're into your your folder or file navigation system you then want to go to the place where daisy is installed back to the missions folder and double click the expansion com Trenerous plus mission make sure you select this folder and once it's selected it should have a pathway to the folder now what you want to do is you want to load your DAISY expansion mods, like so. If it requests for you to load dependencies, just click load selected mods. There you have it. This is also completely discretionary, but if you want, you can load the Zomberry admin tools. And this just basically gives you another way to change the weather in the game. Okay, so we've got all of our mods loaded. There are two main ways to get the offline expansion mod to work without an error message crashing your game. The first option is the best one, and I really recommend you go for this one first. Go into your DayZ directory again, then back into missions, and then back into the offline folder. And what you want to do is delete the init.c file. You don't need it. It involves some modules like base building and other things which are really not necessary for our intents and purposes. All we want are the core functionality of DAISY expansion which is to spawn in vehicles and to have an offline platform to play the game. So simply delete this file. Now as a further precaution go into the core folder and then into modules and delete the debug monitor folder. Option two is arguably the worst option and this should only be used if this option doesn't work and let's say you're watching this in the future now what you want to do is simply force windowed mode from your daisy launcher so in order to do this simply go to parameters and you just click force windowed mode here once you've done this it will obviously launch the game in a little window and 
and after it's launched it, you simply wait for the error to pop up, tab out, and click through the compile error message, so you click where it says abort. Even though the mouse disappears, then you tab back in and wait for it to load. Now, this will circumvent the problem for you. Okay, so you're into the game. Now what? What you want to do is just simply press end to activate the community online tools, and then Y to open the menu. That will bring up quite a complex looking menu. Simply scroll down to the bottom and select vehicle spawner. So you might want to go to weather if you want to sort of change it up a bit. Maybe you want to alter the time of day, make it look a bit cinematic. But for our intents and purposes, this will be our main menu. Now, one tip I recommend is that you want to have the mouse cursor pointing at where you want the helicopter to spawn. So if I'm looking over here, it's going to spawn all the way over there. I want to have it right here, so I'm going to look at the ground, press Y, open up my vehicle spawner, and as you can see here, we've got loads of different options. We've got driver copter, which I'll show you, and we've got, obviously, the beautiful little bird. And then our third helicopter is one that you'll probably recognize from Armour 2. The beautiful Vietnam Huey. And then the biggest helo, which is almost akin to the Chinook and something which I flew a lot of on Pakistan back in the Armour 2 days is the Merlin. So we've got four helicopters in total. All of these helos are completely ready for us to fly. We don't have to rent our own server or do some complex coding and scripting. It's all ready to go and if we die we just simply restart and respawn the helos again. Currently, as far as I know, there isn't a way for you to activate god mode, so you can carry on playing. Uh, there isn't a way for you to spawn in the air. Press P for earplugs. You'll need that for the Merlin, and you'll see why in a minute. Before you even get in your helo, what you want to do is you want to copy my controls, as I guarantee that the default ones will kill you. They are a fucking death trap. So go into your controls, go into key bindings, scroll down, and then at the second to top menu, here you've got the Daisy Expansion helicopter controls. I'll pause the video if you need to. It's very important you have left alt set for your free look key, and we'll talk about that later. It's also important that you have these keys for your cyclic, and we'll also talk about that later. They're not a one-to-one -one mirror of my Armour 3 ones, as the Daisy Expansion helicopter flight model isn't completely as you'd expect. It's got lots of holes, but hey, it's a mod, so give it a break. It's done more than the Daisy devs have. Now just go through and make sure you don't mix up the cyclic left and right, as annoyingly they're in a different order to the pedals up here. Now what you want to do is go into options, so make sure you apply that to save it. Go back, go into options again, then click expansion. What we want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom of this menu and ensure that you have yes to both of these settings, inverted mouse control and helicopter mouse control. This way, when you press alt, it will activate or deactivate mouse controls. And it is very handy for getting those fine adjustments to landing. Really important here, click apply and then click exit, all right? We want to shut the entire game down. We want to reboot it again, because this is the way we're obviously going to save our settings. If you don't do this and your game crashes for whatever reason, just remember we're playing on a, a modded and scripted version of the game. So this is not how it was intended to be played. All right, now the fun part, the walkthrough of getting in and how we start up. So, sorry if I'm teaching you how to suck eggs, you're just for beginners and anyone who is completely new to flying. What we want to do is simply walk up to our helo, press F when we get the option on, on the left door. However, in the Merlin, there is no way to get in through this door. You actually have to jump aboard like so. You have to walk through and the pilot seat is on the right. Okay, we get into our pilot seat by holding F. Press F whilst looking to your left to close your door. And all we want to do is just hold our left mouse button to start the engine. And as I said before, press P to insert your earplugs and that will take it down to about 
20% volume. Now W will raise your altitude. Okay, so that's your collective increase. And what I've done here is I've I've tapped W once. And the helo is just continuing upwards. It's not like an Arbor 3 where you have to hold it. In this, the controls are very, very sensitive. They're more sensitive than the loose women panel. Ah, oh, maybe not that sensitive, but you get the idea. Okay, so we want to then press S to counter this increase in altitude. S is going to bring us back down to the ground. As you can see, we're slowly descending back down again. So there seems to be this kind of momentum with a lot of the controls in this, especially with collective. You want to watch this when you're landing, because currently I'm not pressing anything. To change pitch and direction, we have two options. We can either use our mouse, or we can use the number pad. The number pad is helpful because that allows me to use track IR. You cannot use track IR whilst using the mouse. It's a really annoying bug. I'm not sure how to fix it. But basically, the game does not recognise head movements combined with mouse movements in the helicopter. It just doesn't work. If you don't use the track IR, then I would recommend sticking with the mouse and just keeping your view fixed. If you really have problems seeing what's going on below you, of course you can increase your field of view. As you can see, it's quite a drastic difference. So having your field of view nice and high will give you that edge in first person. Now, the way I move forward is by pressing 8 on the number pad. The way I move backwards is by pressing 2 on the number pad. But again, I'm not I'm not pressing it lots of times. This is me just pressing it once. So it has this kind of momentum effect. You know, you press a key once and you've, you've almost got to immediately counter it with its opposite key. So if I press 8 once to bring me forward, I've got to press 2 to bring me backwards. And 8 again. And then there we go. We're kind of balanced at this point. In a way, this number pad sets up is really good because it gives you that arrow key layout. Everything is very close to your fingers and you don't have to worry about touching the mouse. Now, how do we bank left and right? We'll, we'll simply press 4 on the number pad for left. And 6 on the number pad for right. There you go. Okay, so last but not least, we have A for pedal left and D for pedal right. I've got a few pointers for the flying in this, and let me tell you, I'm by no means perfect. I definitely cannot fly as well as I can in Armour 3. To be honest, it's a matter of muscle memory, getting used to those controls. In essence, a lot of the stuff from Armour 3 will of course be transferable. But I'll try to make these tips as bespoke as possible to the Daisy Expansion model helicopters. The big one is do not try to overcorrect. I've already mentioned the controls are ridiculously sensitive. I mean, it's literally the tiniest input and you're banking, you're turning, you're gaining altitude. It all happens so quickly and it does feel incredibly arcadey especially coming from Armour 3, which in itself has quite an arcade flight model. So really use your controls sparingly. Do not overdo it. Just keep it nice and relaxed. Number two, when banking in a direction with the cyclic, complement the turn with the relevant pedal so the helicopter follows. If you don't use both, you'll get this weird Bambi on ice skidding effect, which causes a, effectively a loss of control, and ultimately death. 3. Do not over pitch during takeoff. As I've already said, the controls are very, very, very sensitive. If you over pitch, you'll simply plummet right into the ground and that won't be pleasant for anyone. So make sure you give yourself enough space to gain altitude first and then begin pitching. You really do have to treat this with a lot of caution. In Armour 3, sometimes you can get away with one of those cool takeoffs where you sort of burn a bit into the ground and you're a bit aggressive with it if you're in a hot LZ. You can't really do that here. You can sometimes but not always and to be honest if you're on multiplayer it's just not worth the risk. So always give yourself enough breathing room to raise altitude first and then start thinking about your cyclic movements. Do not land on a sloped surface if you can. 
it will and does end badly. If you get a rock of death and the helo upon landing starts to tip forward uncontrollably, simply counter this by pressing the 2 key on your number pad to bring the helo back into control and yank your cyclic backwards. Sometimes this won't be enough to save you and it will kind of just suck you into the ground but it's your best bet. Now in terms of damage model and hitboxes, there is of course some elements of damage which the helo can take, but by and large it seems that the rotor span doesn't have any immediate collision with objects around it. Of course there is an area around the airframe where if you for example strike a tree it will swing you around kind of like a Mary Poppins umbrella, but for the most part you can actually squeeze in between some quite tight spaces. If you lose your tail rotor, what you want to do is just land ASAP. When the tail goes, it, it, it really goes. I, I mean really. In multiplayer, there will be network lag. Heavy network lag. So please, for the love of God, ensure that you fly at a relatively reasonable height. It can be very often the case, as you saw in that first mouse clip, where all of the other players are seeing something completely differently to what you're seeing. In, in that case, they saw me flying at one meter altitude over the top of the icebergs, whereas for me, I was a good five or ten meters above the ground. This is the kind of stuff, you know, the gamble you take with, again, modded helos. So just have that extra bit of cushion. Granted, we're in offline mode, it doesn't matter, we've got unlimited helos. But when you get into multiplayer and you finish doing your, your fun practicing, and that's where you need to just increase that buffer. My rule of thumb is when I'm on armor 3, king of the hill, my buffer is relatively small. I've got unlimited respawns, and to be honest, the stakes are so low that it doesn't really matter what happens give or take but let's say i was on a, a milsim operation and you have limited respawns maybe there's even permadeath you really don't want to be fucking round with your helo you want to have that buffer you want to make sure you have that extra little blanket of protection to ensure that if something does go wrong you're covered right final two tips for the love of christ don't overcompensate and the final tip don't overcompensate i literally cannot stress this enough the helos are incredibly delicate you need to treat them with a great deal of care and caution otherwise it will end with flame fire rage quits and probably shouting from your team thank you very much for watching guys of course if you have any questions about installation or flight or anything else if maybe you just want to ask me a random question more than happy to get back to you down in the comments. Thank you for your support. Tell me out.